Welcome to my problem podcast. So for my problem podcast, I wanted to pick a topic that was challenging to me and that I really had to sit and think about and visualize. So for me, that was the whole idea of hemisphere specialization and the whole concept of the uh, split brain patient. Because oftentimes you hear people quote or state, oh, I'm a left brain person, I'm a right brain person. And each hemisphere does have its own specialization, but there's a lot of uh, interconnectivity and intercommunication that's involved that can kind of make this concept a little more tricky as you delve into the specifics. So to kind of help clear up some of the issues I have and maybe clear up some of the issues for other people, I thought I would create an activity and walk through it. So here's an example. So I essentially tried to create an activity in which we were essentially scientists. So here's a letter from a concerned parent that I have constructed to help us on our journey through walking through this topic. So here we go. The letter reads, Dear BSC students, or scientists in this case, My name is Richard Brady III, and I am the principal of a private school right here in Birmingham, Alabama. I've contacted you because my son, Johnny, who attends the school, recently had surgery due to his frequent seizures. Surgeons at UAB informed us that his corpus callosum was cut or severed to help treat his seizures. Despite a reduction in seizure activity, his teachers have informed us that he appears to have trouble answering and identifying questions on the left side of the board. My wife and I are worried that maybe the operation has impacted his left eye, or even worse, the surgery has altered his brain. If possible, we could use your help to crack the case. Thank you for your time, and I hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Richard Brady III. So, let's go back to our canvas here and open up a new slide. So, this is a highly specific example. So, to kind of help out Richard Brady III and to answer this question, we really need to examine the case on a little bit more specific level. So as mentioned in the example, the corpus, excuse me while I navigate through my tools here, the corpus callosum is what the surgeons cut. So corpus callosum. And essentially what this is, is it is a large bundle of nerve fibers that connects the uh, uh, right and left hemispheres. So I'm going to draw a diagram here. I'm not very good with the coral painter yet. Still new to it, so bear with me on the diagrams here. So here is our left, here is our right. The corpus callosum is going to help essentially connect these. And so what the surgeons did is they went in with a scaffold and they cut the corpus callosum. So why would they do this? This kind of seems uh, dangerous, but if you understand seizures, so Johnny here, here's our boy Johnny. He has seizures, which are basically the uh, uncontrollable uh, firing of neurons and it can definitely be a detriment to your health to your lifestyle and so by cutting the corpus callosum you can essentially reduce the rate of fire of these neurons uh, between the two hemispheres thus decreasing seizure activity and as stated in the example, it has worked for Johnny. He, his seizures have reduced. However, his parents are kind of left wondering if parents and teachers are like, what is going on? They have all these questions, right? So to kind of answer this, I thought we would come up uh, – with an experiment if we were actually scientists to test this and to help answer his parents' questions and Johnny's questions. 
So here is the experiment that we could possibly design here. So let's say we bring Johnny into the lab. So excuse me while I change tools again. I have to keep doing this. Uh, so we have Johnny here. This is the back of Johnny. And we place Johnny in front of a screen. And I'm going to basically imagine he's kind of, his head is cut open. And here's his left hemisphere of the brain. And here is his right hemisphere of the brain. And we place him in front of a screen or projector. And we try to present with him different stimulus from his right and left visual field. So here's our projector mounted to the wall here. And we have a second projector on the left side of our screen here and let's say we wanted to show him maybe a few images but for the purposes of this podcast I may only use two examples here so for example we have a little card here let's maybe show him a hammer and maybe a math equation like 1 plus 2 equals 3 now for the this portion of the screen we are going to keep the images the same, trying to reduce any kind of variability here. 1 plus 2 equals 3. And we have another hammer. Now, if we present to him the images, let's start off with the right visual field. So we're going to present the image in his right visual field. So let's uh, we're going to do both images, So, but I'm only going to draw the hammer. So we present him with this image that's going to be seen on the right visual field. And it's going to be processed by the left hemisphere. That's why I kind of used the same color here. Now, he's and you ask Johnny, what, what images do you see? What is being shown to you? He's going to say, I see a hammer. He saw the visual stimulus. That information was perceived, uh, was uh, transformed from a sensate to a uh, electrical signal, and then it became a percept, and he perceived it from the right visual field, and uh, it was perceived in the uh, left hemisphere of his brain, and he correctly identified it. Now, let's say we do the same image, this little hammer here, present it to his left visual side so we're going to take our green marker here and go back left visual side and then it's going to be processed by the right side of the brain now his brain is still going to undergo the same process of uh having a sensation it's going to be uh transformed into an electrical signal and then it's going to be perceived uh by the uh, uh specific hemisphere of the brain in this case the right hemisphere as indicated by the green color and He's going to think about it, and in his mind, he's going to recognize, okay, this should be a hammer, but he's not going to properly be able to communicate it. So he's going to be like, um, I don't know. I'm not sure. And he may not even say – he may not say much because he's going to have a difficult uh, time trying to communicate what he saw. And same thing with the numbers. So if we do it on the right side, process by the left, he's going to be able to tell us 1 plus 2 is 3. And then we're going to repeat it with the left side, same equation, going to be processed by the right side, but he's going to not be able to communicate what he actually saw. So you could be thinking as an experimenter, as a concerned parent, okay, well, his right hemisphere is just completely messed up. There's a defect. There's an abnormality from the surgery. Uh, something is wrong here. But let's do some further experiments here. So we're going to still keep him in the lab, but let's say we – ask Johnny to not only identify 
whatever we present to him in terms of the visual stimulus. But we also ask him to, uh, let's also present maybe like, a, let's just say there's also a table here. We put a table out and we have the actual objects themselves. So like we have a real hammer, we have like a, uh, and let's say we have like for one plus two is three, we have maybe three little marbles or something. Uh, and we have a bunch of other objects just to kind of see if he's thrown off. So maybe like a, a frisbee and like so a candy cane. It's Christmas time. Maybe the candy cane. Um, not the appropriate color for a candy cane, but you get the point. And so let's say we show him the hammer. On the right visual side, it's processed by the left. So what's going to happen is he will actually correctly grab the hammer. And he'll be like, this is what I saw. I saw a hammer. Now, if, for example, we show him the same thing on the left visual side, he's going to process that stimulus, and he's going to be like, man, I think I know what this is. I have a good feeling. But he's not going to be able to correctly communicate it, and it's going to be uh, a little more confused. So he may connect it to something else. So, for example, if we have a hammer, and then we have maybe like a house, a little toy house here, he may grab the house. Because even though he knows, oh, I, I saw a hammer, but he grabbed a house. This is completely different than what um, we actually showed him. So that means that uh, – and he and he may grab the house and say, oh, I saw a hammer. And he may backtrack through and say, oh, well, a hammer uh, was used to build the house. And it may make sense, but his communication of it is going to be slightly different in that he's not actually going to grab the hammer. So – this tells us a lot here, so let me open up a new tab. But before we kind of go into answering the question for the parent, we have to kind of go back a little bit and understand a little bit more about the specializations of each side of the brain. Now, we are going to do that after I change the tools. So, now that I've changed tools here, so we've conducted two experiments. So, what are the experiments going to tell us? So, the first experiment helped us understand a little bit more about what's going on in the hemispheres. So, just in general here, as I mentioned previously, we need to kind of understand, backtrack and understand uh, what, what's going on in the left and right hemispheres. So, here's the left, here's the right. So as far as the left hemisphere, most people understand the general concept of uh, I'm left brain, I'm right brain. And for the most part, the information is accurate. So left side of the brain, you have speech, you have uh, reasoning, you have uh, analytical thought, you have uh, logic, you have math. You have um, verbal tasks, things of that nature, uh, and it's connected to right visual field. So, as you can see from the experiment we did with Johnny, we showed him things in the right visual field, um, and he was able to properly identify uh, whatever stimulus we showed in front of him because it was processed by this left side from... Uh, it went from the right side being shown and then processed by the left. Now, for the right side of the brain, you have things like space perception. You have uh, music. You have uh, emotional context to languages. You have imagination, uh, facial recognition, so and the comprehension of visual imagery. That's another one. Uh, and it's connected to... As you can guess by now, the left visual field. Now this is important because in our experiment that we did on Johnny, that we would conduct on Johnny, we would show it to him on the left visual field, and the right hemisphere is what would process it. And so, as you can see, he, he's able to just process it internally, but he's not able to properly communicate it. And that's where the second portion of our little experiment uh, plays a role here. So... I'm going to open up a new t document here. And what we have to understand here with the second portion of our experiment 
is that we are able to kind of answer the question a little bit better for Johnny's parents. Because if you think about it, he's able to process the information. So that means there's no real damage to the hemispheres. Um, there's just some impairment in the actual communication of the thought. And that's why we had him try to pick the object after we showed it to him um, to see where the impairment is. And so clearly when we showed it on the left side and he had to visualize it on the right, when we showed it, excuse me, when we showed him uh, the stimulus from the left visual field and processed by the right, he was able to kind of internalize it, but he couldn't properly communicate it. That's why he said, uh, not sure. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's why. Because the right side of the brain uh, is definitely considered uh, specialized for language, and he was unable to communicate this idea uh, as well as he could have when it was presented on the opposite visual field. So how do we kind of tie this back uh, to the beginning example that I showed you in the Word document? How do we give Johnny's parents a kind of summary or definitive answer of what's going on here and so here's essentially what we have to report so we both we know that the left and excuse me i'm still new to this program so i gotta keep changing out these uh airbrushes so the left and right hemispheres uh, of the brain are specialized in different tasks And uh, this was discovered through our example and through other examples uh, in psychology in, in terms of analyzing split brain patients. And so as we've seen in this example, so we showed pictures to a split brain patient on the left vision field and the right hemisphere. Uh, and this makes the patient say, I saw nothing as we saw in uh, the example written here on the smart pad. So even so the patient, so here's the, here's the trick here. So the patient able to pick up the uh, earlier shown object from behind the screen, which means the right half actually does understand. So there, it's not like he's brain dead or he has some severe mental abnormality. His right half of the brain is working. It's functioning well. And so, uh, but here's the thing. When the patient... Uh, in this case, Johnny, he's going to pick up the object. He's going to ask, why did I pick this? He's not going to really have a reason for why he picked this. And the reason for this is the speaking left hemisphere is now able to look at the object in the right visual field. But the right vision field has not been able to see the flash object on the screen. So that's going to be important when we uh, analyze and conduct the uh, experiment in terms of both of its parts. So what do the experiments actually prove further, uh, kind of going off of the conclusion still? So the experiments prove that the left hemisphere uh, is better, is better uh, in language than the right. And so I'm going to kind of correct myself here. I believe I said earlier something along the right side maybe uh, uh, – uh, better with language there, but I'm going to correct that. The left portion is better for language. As you can see, Johnny was able to actually communicate the idea when we showed an object on the right visual field. So what do our experiments prove uh, after this correction I've made? Our experiments prove that the right hemisphere is uh, perfectly normal. It understands things. It's perfectly normal in the, its understanding of uh, different things. Perfectly normal in terms of uh, understanding things. But here's the key, which will help Johnny's parents understand what's going on, is that it can't speak and it can only read and comprehend the meaning of simple um, uh, things such as nouns, adjectives, or verbs. And um, so basically it's, it's much more, it's become kind of simplified. And furthermore, the right hemisphere uh, lacks this kind of ability to uh, 
do these kind of simple calculations and simple additions and uh, it's lacking that power. So in terms of, okay, what did we tell Johnny's parents? Well, Johnny's pretty much for the most part fine uh, in terms of him, his hemisphere is being able to process information. It's just the issue comes in actually being able to communicate the idea properly. So I hope you all have a better understanding of split brain patients and uh, lateral, uh, contralateral specializations for the left and right side. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast.